Gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. Straight through the red light. Said she never saw it. Hey, you think those vice boys get in the other side? Tell a man that there are 400 billion stars in the evening. Tell him a bench has to on his prince. To and he still confessed. I don't want to be rude, but I'm drunk, mister, you just cracked. Looks like the DA is going to press charges. And Rodriguez might do time. I'll speak to the DA. She suffered. I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make if the DA likes conviction. I'll convince him to let me go. How do you do that? I'll give him something better. Detectives, over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Because a white male named Lester Patterson walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar. Name is Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. on his face and ended up here. The car must have struck him from behind. Phelps, you should take a look at the body. The poor guy didn't stand a chance. Notify next of kin.
What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Careful where you step in, Phelps. I don't come down to the station house and tap dance on your desk. Body traveled a good 20 feet. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. driver managed to brake before the impact. It's all yours, detective. Knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three, C, eight. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman, that's all. Go on. Then a third person, another man, got involved. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. Courtney, come in. Have a seat. Thanks, doctor. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh...
fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, Doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. If we can reveal the root of the problem, then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually of benefit to society at large. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, Mrs. Patterson, home. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Esther and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. Do you know the victim? Yeah, Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? Why was Lorna Patterson in such a hurry to leave? What is going on here? Lorna was pretty upset, so Leroy took her home. Lorna and Leroy are close. They've been talking about opening a new bar. Leroy? Leroy Sabo, the owner. How long have Lorna and Leroy been talking about this new bar? Uh, who knows? I just served the drinks. Bartenders hear all sorts of things. Are you going to tell me, or do we have to start playing rough? When Lester was drinking, he treated Lorna like dirt. He gambled away all their money. Lorna pitched Leroy about the bar. I don't know how interested he is. Is Leroy doing well? <laughs> Hell no. The only thing keeping this place afloat are the poker games. Thanks for your help, Lynch. I'm going to need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. Operator, give me R and I. There it is. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge twelve forty-seven. How could I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate three Charles eight. Cross-check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, Detective. Only one possible make on that license. 
registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thanks, ma'am. Looks like we caught a break on this one. Taking the next right. Lucky break, getting the partial ID. Okay, so you usually dead in the water after 24 hours and no one comes forward. Straight through the next intersection. Why don't they just stop? You heard about fight or flight during the war? Sure. Never back your enemy into a corner. That kind of stuff. Right. Well, in a hit and run, the curve is already in flight. It's easy to keep going. It takes a degree of moral courage to stop and accept responsibility. As dumb as you make yourself out to be. Almost. right there. William Shelton? Yes. It doesn't look good, Shelton. You packing your bags and making a run for it? You know why we're here. Yes. The accident. We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Shelton. That coward thinks he can run from everything. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. Get away. Enough games, folks. Take this guy out. Slaughter rap sound, Shelton. I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is going to love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. Leave the coroner and the paperwork. Procedure can wait. We should probably go speak to the wife and let her know what's happening. OK. I'm all part of the process. 
Break through the next intersection. Straight through. Take the next right. Next right. talking about we weren't doing nothing no i'm seeing you little sons of bitches brawling around my store i'll show you i'll, I'll teach you not to sir drop the weapon you've been drinking sir you don't really want to. three times i've been robbed ain't nothing gets done about it look out more of them put them down <laughs> Eleven King calling KGPL. I've been involved in a shooting. Suspects are down. Need an ambulance. It's 540 West 9th Street. It's a code 4. Notify a supervisor in the corner. Roger, Eleven K. All units be advised. Suspects are down at 540 West 9th Street. Shooting at Uncle side. Sam's Army surplus is code 4. Spare the general population, please. Next left. Taking the next right.
Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here. I beg I... your pardon? You're going to have to run that one bias again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. You expect me to believe that, Lorna. It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? Don't lie to me. Something was different this time. <laughs> You're clutching at straws. You married? The arguments are never any different. The bartender said that you and Leroy were planning to go into business together. Can you explain how you'll get the money to do that? I have a little money saved away. You're being economical with the truth, Lorna. You want to back that up, little man? You increased the premium on Lester's life insurance. GI insurance policies have a $10,000 payout. It was Leroy's idea. Lester lived on the edge. He was always getting into fights, crap games, pinochle, you name it. Turns out it was good advice. It speaks to motive and premeditation, Lorna. You're forgetting the hit and run, detective. You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're having with all this.
Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, Detective? Are there any messages for me? Just one, Detective, from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thank you. It's him, the cop from the newspaper. the next ride. Rehab is for quitters. We could put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there and they tried to stare us down. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. There are three kinds of people. Those who can count and those who can can you drive to this one? <laughs> Do we know where we're going? spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. I see you to give me up, sweetheart. Oh, they're whispering in my ear, telling me how we had to get rid of them, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, shut the up! You had all the bases covered, baby. I had nothing to do you with it. You think I'm going to fry for He's you, Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake! It's too late, Sabo. Stop him! Stop him! I will shoot. Last chance to surrender, Stop any closer and I will pull the trigger. Put the weapon down now. Help me!
You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. So, I give you a hit and run, you bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first-degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Kowski. B Cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there, see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. We're on it, Captain. I swear the more bent cars we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though. It keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which she's accustomed. I'm not sure she'd agree with you. Passionate, romantic type like you, Cole? I don't believe it would. Has anyone seen that one? Is one of you two free? Thank you. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. I should have driven. They're calling her the Dahlia now. Wonder what Veronica Lake makes of that one. What a case. You hear whether they're making any progress? So Captain Donnelly seems to think they have it all wrapped up. Brown and Green are sweating this manly character. I heard it'll be in front of a grand jury by next week. Try making it to the next intersection without killing anyone. Can you do that for me? Open your eyes! Take the next left. Fourth thing. Terrible enough being murdered like that without having to get screwing all over the front knees. the car, Cole. Just pulling out of the drive. Get him. Remember, we need him healthy enough to answer questions. 1247, Detective Phelps requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. Games, Phelps. Take this guy out. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. All right, all right. Maybe I was a couple miles over the speed limit. Get bracelets on him, Phelps. I'll call it in. Out of the car, car now! Car 11K to KGPL. Suspect in custody required. Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? Nice try. I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it.
like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. You purchased this car from Coombs Automotive Company? Yeah, that's right. And the ownership papers? From the same place. If this is a forgery, it's top notch. This will need to be traced. You have a criminal record, Mr. Harrison? No. Nothing like that. You better give us something, Cliff. But we're gonna make this hard on you. I didn't steal the car. I ran because... because I've got some wacky backy in the glove compartment. How much, Cliff? One reefer. We'll let it slide. You're in enough trouble. Who did you deal with at Coombs Automotive? The owner, Richard Coombs. And he made out the bill of sale personally? Of course he did. He kept a facsimile for his records. Check with him. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Harrison. Until we do, you're going downtown. You gotta be kidding me. I'm getting arrested for buying a goddamn car? If everything is legit, Harrison, you'll be out soon. Until then, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Bag his possessions as evidence and have him arraigned for Grand Theft Auto. Right, Detective. Do you know who my father is? We need to get to Coombs Auto and check out Harrison's story. What? I think he's telling the truth. Some of the most convincing people you will ever listen to are born liars. Usually they're called politicians. Straight over. Paperwork all looked above board, and he seemed like a clean-cut kid. Uh-huh. Well, I get it. You see some kid who's basically... Oh! Unbelievable! I'm more than happy to be proved wrong. Hey, if he'd been black or Hispanic, you'd be singing a different tune. You spout all this communist crap about treating everybody the same, but it only works one way. Right turn, coming up. I'm not sure that's communism. Oh, God, please. Not another history lesson from the man who single-handedly won the war. Are you finished? Yes. I feel much better. We'll shake down the car dealer and take it from there. Unless his daddy plays golf with yours, of course. In which case, we'll give him a firm gentleman's handshake and be on our way. See? I knew you weren't finished. Another step. I have got a Buick Century sedan that would be absolutely perfect for you. Detective Phelps, LAPD, are you the owner? That's right. Richard Coombs, at your service. You looking to trade in a black and white, boys? <laughs> Mr. Coombs, we're investigating an auto theft. A man by the name of Cliff Harrison claims he bought the car here. Well, uh, some people would say that my cars are a steal. That's a joke, son. Very amusing, Mr. Coombs. I remember Harrison. It was a green two-tone Kaiser Fraser, if I remember rightly. Do you have the bill of sale? It's in my office. Walk this way. That's a joke, too, son. Mm -hmm. Phelps, you mind if I shoot this guy? He's getting on my nerves. I look for the ideal customer, son, and you ain't halfway dumb enough. Here it is. Got the original pink slip there, too. Gene 
Archer, 146 North Fremont Avenue. Harrison's purchase receipt was legit, at least. We have a couple of questions. All right, fellas, shoot. Can you tell us how you came to buy the car? Girl just wandered in right off the street. Nothing unusual about the car. Not really my usual type of vehicle. The price was certainly right, though. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. Did you pay with check or cash? A check. She wanted it made out to cash, but I insisted. Man has to watch his cash flow. What name? I made it out to Gene Archer on the Bank of Arcadia. Can you describe this Gene Archer? Brunette, maybe 25, 26. A little on the plump side, but not bone ugly. What was your impression of her? Kind of harried and harassed. In a hurry to go somewhere, but no place to go, you get to know the type. Do you know anything about the company that prints these pink slips? Nope. Should I? It isn't exactly my business. Says Marquee Printing. You've never heard of them? Marquee? Sure. They do all the government red tape. You'll find the place down on Aliso Street near San Pedro. When exactly did you hand over the check, Mr. Combs? Close of play on Friday. Why didn't you pay her cash? You knew the car was dirty. I had an inkling. When people are in a hurry for money, always pay by check, son. Gives you a couple days to back out. This was all above board. Yes, of course it was. Did this look legitimate to you, Coombs? I'm in used cars, son, not bearer bonds. In my business, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Now don't come on all high and mighty with me if you want my help. Thanks for your help, Mr. Coombs. We need to continue the investigation. Hope you sort out your problem with Mr. Harrison. Go easy on him, son. Boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. He's built too low. The fastballs fly over his head. Let me shoot this guy, please. You have a pleasant day, Mr. Well, Harrison might be off the hook, but we can still run an APB on Gene Archer. Get on the horn and call it in. Phelps badge 1247. Requesting an APB on Gene Archer, age approximately 25, on suspicion of Grand Theft Auto. All 
relay the information. Messages, please. A James Velasco is being held at Central Station on suspicion of GTA. Possible link to the Harrison case. They're waiting on you to conduct the interview. Thanks. I think his name is Phelps. I read about him in the paper. So, you gonna see your married man again? You know the way. You can drive. Uh, where are we going? Here's a chicken and egg question for you. Do you think you have to be an asshole to sell cars? Or that selling cars turns you into an asshole? You've got it in for everyone today, haven't you? I've always got it in for cars, so it doesn't matter what day it is. And why do they always think they're comedians when they're about as funny as a heart attack? Maybe the more annoying they are, the quicker you sign on the dotted line, just to get the hell out of there. Empty. Should have known that Archer Broad would have given us a false address. We should go to the station, see what this Velasco guy has to say. Detectives, Belasco is prepped and ready in two. Another stolen car with legit papers. Thanks. I want to make homicide. You know you made it. Where's the phone? Sam's taking me out to Palm Springs for the weekend. <laughs> Mister, a man like you always loses a battle of wits because you're unarmed. Crummy bastard. James Belasco? I want a lawyer. It's my car and I got the proof right here. Take a look for yourself. How bad is it? Come on, you can tell me. The paper is real enough, Belasco, but the car isn't yours. This pink slip is a forgery. Hey, buddy, you dropped something? Where were you taking the car, James? Blow it off, Greenhorn. You'll get nothing from me. You're a two-time loser. If you don't give me something, I'm gonna ask the DA for the maximum. You're looking at ten years, Belasco. Kiss your youth goodbye. I want a deal. Keep talking and we'll see what sort of deal you're worth. My job is to drive the cars out of state. Nevada, Arizona, sometimes New Mexico. With the paperwork they provide, it's normally a breeze. Does the name Jean Archer mean anything to you? Nope. Never heard of her. You're a liar, James. Say that again. I'm telling the truth. I don't know the broad. So that's why you both have the same address printed on your pink slips. She's a mule for these stolen vehicles, genius. Same as you. Jesus. All right, I know her. Stupidest broad I ever met. Always cooking up crazy schemes. I don't know why those guys use her. You happy now? What happens to the cars once they cross over the state lines? I don't know. I just deliver them. Give me something, Velasco, or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. 
How long do you think you'll last? Okay, okay, I hear you. The cars get sold in Chicago or back east. Sometimes I bring back cars coming the other way. Where do you pick up the cars, Velasco? Warehouses. Mainly in the east downtown. Come on, Velasco. You must have an address. That's not the way they work. They keep moving around, never the same address twice. All right, James. We're going to check if this information is worth anything. And if it is, I need your help here, pal. If it is, then we'll know you're a man of your word, and so will the DA. You're Phelps, right? Yes, I am. Look, can we do this later? I'm in the middle of it. Ray Pinker. I'm with Technical Services. The pink slips are all real. Yes, we know that. There's only one company that prints them in California, the Marquee Printing Company. They've confirmed that the numbers are legitimate. You've checked them out? Sure. They're on Aliso Street, near the corner of San Pedro. The guy I spoke to was Lightvol, Gordon Lightvol. Here, I wrote it down. Thanks, Ray. This is a great lead. We'll get down there as soon as we can. Corner says it's going to take at least a week to get an idea. I have faith in the Lord. Do you the Lord? That bum took a swipe at me. I put him down with my sack. When is America going to understand? It's not about getting, it's about giving. She wants a five star goddamn way. Hey, don't mind me. How bad is it? Come on, you can tell me. Look, detective, I've got things of my own to get back to. Three blondes walk into a bar. You think one of them would have seen it? Straight through the red light. Said she never saw it. Phelps, your GTA suspect, Gene Archer, spotted by a patrolman. Western Union office, 253 South Hill. Less than a minute away down the street if you run. Go! She won't hang around. I heard he's an honest cop. LAPD. We'll take it from here. God damn it. Everyone's against me. Look, just let me get my money and get out of here, okay? You look sweet. How about giving a girl a break? I could be very nice. I'm afraid I can't do that, Miss Archer. Stefan, call for black and white. Just my luck to get the only hair sure cop in the LAPD. The car you sold to Coombs was stolen, Miss Archer. There won't be any money. I handed over all the right paperwork when I sold it, Buster. You're lying, Jean. You want to prove that, Buster? Try and prove that pink slip is not real. Look, this is all just a big mistake. I don't want to talk anymore. Just let me go. How long have you and Belasco been delivering cars? Who is James Belasco? You're lying. 
James Belasco. I don't remember mentioning his first name, Miss Archer. Oh, I... Well, I think you did, didn't you? Well, I'm sure of it. Anyway, I don't know him. You aren't sharp enough to lie to me, Jean. You and James Belasco share the same address on your pink slips. We have him in a cell. Okay, so I know the creep. The pink slips are real. The home addresses are always vacant lots. Bigelow is always boasting that the paperwork is legit and that if we stick to our stories... And don't try and sell the car? Yeah, that too. Tell me where you picked up the car, Miss Archer. Look, I, I can't remember. Let me go, will you? Please. What have I got to do? Trying my patience here, Jean. I'll have the reporters down here and have your picture in all the papers. You'll have nowhere to run. All right, already. I get the message. I pick up the cars from a guy named Bigelow. 58 Industrial Street. Big warehouse full of goons. Now you've got what you want. Can I go? Please? No, you sure can. We've got a car waiting outside for you. Some career advice, Gene. Get out of crime. Marry someone boring who has money and will find you captivating. Is this guy for real? He takes a little getting used to, but yeah, he generally means what he says. <laughs>